but I ended up asking, is this an anal requirement? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, his answer is yes. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh Amazing. my god and see stories like that are what we're supposed to be saving for the show <laughs> hello and welcome to the ritual misery podcast episode 120 i should have just said 120 this is like the one few times that i can actually say that for thursday the 23rd of march 2017 this is a show where two lifelong friends talk and their guests celebrate all things geek, and I'm going to get that shit down one day very soon. I'm Amos, that's Kent, and we have tonight someone someone's actually kind of special. Like, like I, I, I always try to come up with some kind of new intro for every person, because that's just like what I do. But then there's and people... This is when I step in and say, we've got one of the coolest dudes in Diamond Club that we've never actually met, and we want to know more about... Tom DeGassa. What's there. up, man? Hey, what's up, guys? That was Thanks way better than the intro that I had planned. <laughs> 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 oh, my gosh. Um, so, longtime Diamond Clubber uh, artist, and that's about as far as the general populace is probably going to know about you, man. Like, like, <laughs> like who are you? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just a man. <laughs> I'm just a man. <laughs> just a man. <laughs> Where I was going with that. Uh, and, uh, awesome. Yeah. Well, gl- glad to be have- part of the community. Awesome. Uh, Amos, how's your week been? Uh, I got a new job. Cool. And I started doing training for it. Um, as we were talking about pre-show, uh, lots, of, lots of CBTs, computer-based training. And we have certain training that's due every year regardless. And that training is due at the same time right now. <laughs> so... I get you all of it all at once. Yes, yes, of course, and uh, and of course the website we have to use for it. It's called ADLS, uh, Advanced Distributed Learning System, or whatever. Um, Not so advanced anymore. No, it it was down like the last three days. It's been down and up and down and up. Like I'll start a course, but it won't let me finish. So I have to log completely out, log back in, continue the course if it lets me continue from where I left off. And then yeah, it's God. It's just been. You'd think some shit would yeah. work once in a while. Yeah. You know, what's weird because now that I'm a civilian working for the Air Force, I still have to take most of those training courses. Mm-hmm. Uh, the difference is like nobody really tracks mine. <laughs> so <laughs> no one cares. No one really cares. Like it depends on who the, the training monitor is. Mm. What you know, the last training monitor was all up in my shit about, hey, you're overdue on this training it's like, okay, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. And finally, you know, after a lot of harassment, I'll, I'll get it done. Well, then we got this new one in, and yeah, I, I think I'm overdue on like six or seven courses, and she doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So, um, <laughs> oh, uh, do, you, do you do any computer-based training in, in whatever it is you do? <laughs> <laughs> Me? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All the time. Uh, no, uh... No, unless you count me trying to teach myself new tricks in uh, Manga Studio or Photoshop or something. Uh, or, or, or trying <laughs> to get out of a ticket, right? Self-restraining. Got it. Uh, so, um, yeah, that's that's pretty much been my, my week, man. Uh, Kent, appar- apparently, see, uh, it's starting to get the break up around here. The weather's turning nice. Um, it's above freezing for, like, a good part <laughs> of the day. Uh <laughs> How's it been down That's there, Dude, it's been like super warm. Now, if you don't count today, today we had wind sustained winds of 50 knots today. It was ridiculous. Now, what is that but, miles per hour? Uh, like 50? Uh, n- no. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> it's pretty close. It's uh I don't know. I I don't know what it is, but it's it's, it's it's ridiculous. Is what I, it I can is. never remember if a knot is slower than a mile per hour, or uh, I, I know I know like fifty is fifty four, but I don't know if that's fifty four miles per hour equals fifty knots or fifty not fifty. Mi- so um, what's the weather like it's where it's you are, Tonda? <laughs> uh, cold, <laughs> <laughs> just like everywhere else. It's too cold. Are, aren't we in springtime already? Uh, yeah. Right. Well, a, here, a here in New Mexico, it's totally spring. Like it, it's hot enough now where. Uh, 
I enjoy sitting outside in the backyard and I've got a little fire pit and that's when I know that the weather is good because I decide, hey, this is perfect weather to have a fire at midnight. And that was that was pretty much my Friday night. Mm-hmm. Around a fire, some beers, hanging out, shooting the poop. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Sounds shooting, shooting good poop. That's not that's what not good, man. Things. Shooting poop. Like <laughs> Oh no, not I, that. I know, I, know not you that got, I know you got plenty of dogs, <laughs> but that's not that's probably not a preferred uh <laughs> A preferred activity. Yeah, you know, you bust out the BB guns and uh, <laughs> shoot. Oh my god! That, that was <laughs> Literally. Yeah, exactly. Um, Ollie, uh, what uh, what was what would you what would you really call uh, uh, um, words? Uh, <laughs> words, words. Yes. Uh, what was your week like, man? Oh, um, well, not nothing much happened. I was just like, um, you know, just working on. Uh, Patreon art and stuff like that. Um, but actually, um, this week, uh, I got a, a mysterious DM, and it was from one of the developers of a game called that came out recently called a River City Ransom Underground. Mm. And uh, he's he's like the artist for River City uh, River City Ransom Underground. But I don't follow him on Twitter. I follow the River City Ransom Underground guys on Twitter and so uh, it, it happened like <laughs> rewind a little bit um, I was I was working on some fan art for um, the game for a character that I like using uh, the main one that I prefer is this uh, girl called Provi and she does like breakdance moves and stuff and and so um, she's really fun to play with and uh, so I just just happened to do a drawing of her on um on twitch uh on my twitch channel so uh twitch.tv slash tonda gasa and <laughs> and so uh that day i was actually om- i almost went to uh drawing uh another character from a game that i played recently on stream called uh, freedom force which is uh, some character called el diablo i'm sure this is all fascinating to you <laughs> oh i love <laughs> Love it. This, this is this actually has a tie into something I want to talk about later. So, um, Yo, great, real quick, great. Uh, real quick, I want to throw in my yeah. two cents here. River City Ransom was the greatest game on the NES. Yes, it was. It was, <laughs> it was so fun. It, it's a sleeper too. Like everybody's heard of Double Dragon. Everybody's heard of you know all these other games, but nobody's nobody knows about River City Ransom, and that was the coolest fighting game that there. Yeah, only, only the most hipster people that that like follow retro games all the time know about that stuff right or, or, um, but it was kind of like the first it came out <laughs> yeah it was kind of yeah <laughs> so it was like one of the first uh open world games or something right sort of sort of open world like you go from screen to screen but still like you could go wherever you want right yeah yeah exactly. and um and so instead of drawing the freedom force guy i, I decided to do proby on that day and it turns out like the next morning, um, I was just kind of perusing uh, Twitter and uh, looking up hashtags because the reason I did Proby is because there wasn't enough, <laughs> this sounds stupid, but there wasn't enough River City Ransom art. And um, sounds it, it's, a game, a game, it's a game that came out recently and, and you know, I kind of wanted to promote stuff that I love and have more people buy it and support the thing that I love and so they could make more of that stuff. It sounds so, completely uh, logical. I mean, that's that's what you do, right? When you're a fan of something. Right? You, that's what, what you do. I mean, we don't know yeah. anything about being a fan of something and then creating something to add to the thing we're a fan of. Like, we... we <laughs> yeah. We've never done that's that. That's that in Diamond Club. Especially. Yeah, I know. <laughs> exactly. I'm sure everyone here understands. So, um, so I, I drew it and... Um, I wasn't even gonna finish it that day. I was, I was just gonna, I was just gonna wait until like the next day and then do the coloring and you know kind of take my time with it as usual. But that day I was so excited to finish the thing, so I, I finished it that night. Turns out the next day was the deadline for this contest that I ran into, and uh, so uh, I turned now, it in. No, I have, a, and I, have I was the, like, I have the the picture of the um, of the contest but i don't have the art that you submitted oh you could go to my um my website 
sí. uh, tondagasa.com or olisantos.com. So, uh, so there, there's that. There, so I just showed the picture of the of the contest itself. Now, what happened after that? So, um, so I didn't really expect to win. I'm, I'm that way. <laughs> I don't expect to win stuff. Um, so if it happens, then it happens. But I thought it'd be fun to enter and you know hopefully promote my name and stuff. And and so uh, so uh, fast forward back to uh, this week, um, about three or four days ago, got a DM. Not a DM, but I got a Twitter message from the guy, and he said that the only thing he said was, "Um, kind of want to look at it." The only thing he said was, "Uh, send me a photo of you." That's all he said, and uh, I remembered that one of the prizes was that he he would either do an animated GIF of you or just like a pixel version of you. Mm-hmm. And um, you know he's a pixel art guy. He's the guy who did the, all the art in the game. So I was like, oh my god, I think I won. <laughs> so I was like, so I, I DM they DM'd him back. I said, wait, uh, so did I win? Because this is weird, just out of the blue. So I'm not just gonna give my photo to anyone, even if it is sort of, you know, yeah, the yeah. guy who, yeah, <laughs> like it, what kind of sounds like. Recently, so- He's creeping on you, like he's hitting on you or something. Uh, just, just, just because that's how I talk to people on Twitter doesn't mean that everybody's all creeping out on you and stuff. You know, just, I, I don't know why you're gonna spray in hatred, Kent. Like I don't, I don't get it, man. So you never know. So, um, so he, then he said he was like, "Yes, now give me, give me." You know, I was like, "Okay." So I, I said, I sent him. Uh, I try to take a decent picture of myself because I don't keep, I don't keep a bunch of pictures of myself around no, so I said, not, not that vain <laughs> no. <laughs> so uh, i took a picture of myself and i sent it to him so uh we'll see what happens i i guess officially he told me that i won but i don't know which prize i won if it's the animated top grand prize or if it's you know mm. second Either tier way, but i want some so so yeah, here's the awesome. uh here's awesome. the, this is the art you actually submitted i believe um with uh, Pro V uh, doing a little one-handed kick kind of thing. Yeah, that move is called a, a flare in the, the breakdance circles, mm. <laughs> which I'm, I haven't been a part of since I was a tiny, <laughs> since I was a little kid. <laughs> so uh, I do know it's called a flare. I don't know. That's I, I think that's that's pretty badass, especially um, when you, because we like to celebrate anything that, that people geek out about. When you're geeking out about a video game, and then you throw some fan art out there, and the creators like, "Hey, yeah, that's that's good shit." Like, what get what's better than that, man? What, how does it get better than that? It doesn't. Uh, <laughs> just happy, yeah. Um, that's the best thing that happened to me this week. <laughs> so, so I watched some movies this weekend. Yeah, anything yeah. good? I watched Get Out. Ooh, okay. Which, uh, damn it, where's my, where's my phone? I keep forgetting to put this shit to where I can actually tweet it out because I'm, I'm really bad at the Twitter. Like, I kind of suck at life at Twitter. Um, <laughs> Everyone keeps talking about that, and I haven't seen it. Yeah, I, I really so, want to see that. That's I think that's the only is, movie playing right now wait, that I haven't yeah, seen but really want to see. So that's what I saw. It's the sign that says, Get Out, and it showed 420. So I had a sign telling me where the movie was, but it was also telling me to get out, and I was a little confused, which is kind of cool. Um, so we watched that. That was after we, we took the kids to watch Logan. And then we came home, and we watched Edge, Edge of Seventeen, which is a you know, coming-of-age movie, um, Woody Harrelson, some other people. And hmm. I got to tell you, like, all three... All three movies were amazing, absolutely amazing. Really, really fucking good movies. Wow. Right. Uh, Ollie, have you seen any of those? I haven't seen any of those. Um, I am planning to see Old Man Logan. I uh, not Old Man Logan, but Logan. <laughs> Might as well be called Logan. <laughs> right. Yeah. That that movie is awesome. That's the only one of the three that I've seen. And like I said, Get Out is definitely on my list. Uh, but th- um, you said thumbs up. To all three? All three. All three. Uh, so, um, Edge of 17, we got out of the red box. And then, of course, the other two we saw in the theater. Get Out was not... I, As my wife said, I thought I had it figured out three different times. 
I wasn't wrong any of those three times. Oh, damn. Okay. Interesting. Except for there's another time for me to guess. Like, it just, <laughs> it, the layers were just really, it was, it's, it's a good movie. It's a good, it's a good, good flick. Um, right on. Logan, I thought was awesome. The rest of the family, like, kind of hated it because they left the theater crying and unsure oh. of what they're supposed to be, what, how they're supposed to feel about things. And, and like the wow. whole movie was kind of like this this emotional roller coaster for him, and I just thought, I mean, like if you're if you're gonna do a, a other than um, other than Deadpool, I think that's probably the the best translation from comic book to surreal life that I've seen. Um, hold on, wait, you can't <laughs> count out Sin City. Uh, right. Well, I mean, if you're gonna talk just comic books, not well, well not no, no, superheroes, because what it does, Logan is not a, Logan is not a superhero movie. Well, I mean, it kind of is. It's it's a it's a movie about a man, like it's not a movie about a superhero. It's a movie about well, a man. It's very much a human story. Absolutely. It, absolutely, like all of the feels are human. It's not about like, hey, look at my cool costume and my cool powers. Yeah. Even though it's got, you know, it displays cool some powers and cool and powers, yeah. <laughs> but that's the point of it. The, the point of it is like, you know, getting down into the the heart of this, like really human, like it's a relationship story, really. Yeah. And like a, uh, uh, you know, what what have we become? Where are we going? What, how will we be remembered? What you know? What's our meaning? What's our purpose? Like it's it's Jeez, very spoiler alert. Just kidding. <laughs> Just messing with you. These are just the questions. I'm not going to be And and that's only that's only the first act. I want to see that. Like that's only yeah, the first right. act. I mean it's <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh my god. Um, you'll you'll like it. I'm sure It's you 2 will. hours and 15 minutes. It seemed like an hour. Like it it really like you as long as you're not going in there like half lit or something like that. You go in, you jump into the story and it just you you're there. You're there in the story. It's it's really a, a really good movie. Um Edge of Seventeen is an interesting take on the teenage angst theme. Uh, it's 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 not a bunch of boys trying to go out and get laid. It's a girl who just feels everyone hates her and uh, finally comes to grips with the fact that she's the only one that hates her. <laughs> so um, interesting. Uh, that's yeah, standard teenage. Yeah, I mean, if, you, if you've ever been a teenager, you'll identify with this movie. Nice, and you said Woody Harrelson's in this. Yeah, he's he actually plays this uh, this this teacher, you know the the main character's teacher, and it, he reprises his role as yeah that guy that doesn't give a shit. He cares, <laughs> but he doesn't like give a every, shit. Every Harrelson char- character ever, yeah, except for it, Woody from it, Cheers. Exactly. <laughs> um, he pull, Woody Harrelson pulls off a of Woody Harrelson perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, did you guys I, know? It, I enjoyed it. It was the, definitely worth the uh, the dollar ninety nine for the DVD rental. There's no reason to get a Blu-ray, but dollar ninety nine. Uh, watch it, enjoy it, return it. Did you guys know Woody Harrelson is going to be in the Han Solo movie? Uh, I think I heard that. Yeah, he's supposed to play. Oh, I've seen the pictures. Yeah. Yeah, and I I can't remember the name of the character, but but I looked up the character. Like if you go to IMDb, it has the character's name. Mm-hmm. I looked that character up on you know I just Googled it and. I guess in the previously established canon, you know what they're calling legends now. He was the guy that that raised Han Solo. Mm. Like Han Solo was like a like a street orphan or whatever. And this guy. So Woody Harrelson's gonna play Star Wars. Woody Harrelson. Got it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and this character is totally just like a, a grizzled old asshole, and we'll all love it. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. I, I I fell in love with Woody Harrelson playing Woody Harrelson in uh, White Man Can't Jump, which yeah. my mom my mom took uh, was it was it me and you Kent or was it me and Chris? I think it was. Uh, I think took, it was me. Took us two from my like fourth, fifteenth, sixteenth, sixteenth birthday maybe. I don't know. It was right, right around somewhere. Um, and dropped dropped us off at the theater. Let us have our our uh, our movie time, which was cool because we were the only people in the theater except for this noisy couple off to the side. We had too much popcorn. They didn't have enough, so we we fixed that uh, during the movie. Um, uh, by distance, and then uh, <laughs> really just enjoyed that movie. And that was the first time that I saw Woody Harrelson be Woody Harrelson. And it's just it, uh, like he, I'd, if he played someone else, I would, I'd be upset. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, 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 <laughs> it, 
<laughs> Man, I um, saw I saw a new movie this weekend. Yeah, the new King Kong movie, uh, Kong uh, Skull Island. Yeah, um, I've heard great things about it actually. Dude, if if you like kaiju movies at all, like the you know the the giant monster like Japanese style monster movie, like dude, like this one is good. It is. Oh, I'm so- in. Yeah, it uh, is awesome. another one to add to the list. <laughs> the uh, the Godzilla movie that came out a couple of years ago, the one that had Brian Cranston in it, it takes place in the same universe as that. Mm. And this is kind wow. of a, I don't want to call it a prequel, but it takes place before that because this one takes place primarily primarily like Vietnam War. But era. it's completely separate though, right? Yeah, it, well, it's separate, but it's in the same universe. Right, but they're, they're not they're not sharing characters and sharing names. You're not like you don't have some little boy running around who later becomes the general trying to take down Godzilla in the other movie or some random bullshit like that, do you? Don't I don't think so. There's no, there's no Dark uh, Tower tie-ins and shit, is there? Like, no, but the so there's gonna be another Godzilla movie coming out like um, next year, hmm. I think. I think it's next year, and then the following year they're gonna do Kong versus Godzilla. Oh, where's Mothra at? This is bullshit. Wow. I think that probably in the next movie, I think it's going to be in the next Godzilla movie. <laughs> Guys, give me some, uh, I don't even know if I'm saying it, ga- Gamera. Yes. Let's oh, say it like oh. the Americans. <laughs> Gamera the giant, and. Giant turtle thing. Yes, and Mothra. Yeah. Yes. Oh, my God. The, oh, I love those movies. I, I'm such a <laughs> dork for yes. the kind of movies. It's so good. <laughs> yeah. Um, I so... that stuff up. So what is this in here about Samurai Jack? Oh, uh, so Samurai Jack. I'm not sure you guys heard it. It's um, Jack is back. It's back. Yeah. <laughs> hashtag Jack is back. <laughs> and um, <laughs> that's their hashtag. And, um, and so uh, it started like two Saturdays ago. That, that uh, season five. And I believe it's supposed to be the final season. And it, cont- it picks up. Uh, 50 years after the um, old series ended. Yep. I remember so, watching the original series, and I saw the trailer for the, for the what is this, season five, I guess? Yes. Technically. Season five. Yeah, like, I, I haven't watched it yet, but I'm so excited to see it. I, I love Samurai Jack. Um, I'll, I'll, okay. my, my, my knowledge of Samurai Jack comes in uh, the little clips I've seen in the commercials, which I think are awesome. Yeah, all all I'll say about it is it still has the same visual impact. There are still the the same kind of scenes that that are uh, awesome, just jaw dropping sequences. That um, I really like beautiful. Tarkovsky's. Beautiful. I really like Tarkovsky's style because it's very like simplistic, like line drawings, but like you said, impactful. Like the yeah. the contrast. Yeah. Like he'll do like you know white and black or like red and black and the, the, it'd be just two colors and it's the most impactful like gritty just in your face animation and the it's directing just, it's just like, like rain rain falling and then silence and for like two minutes or something and and it's like all like those would be just like switching back and forth between him being scared of something and you know this, this goes along him. with so this um, good stuff so Samurai Jack is originally a late '90s thing, right? I, uh, or early 2000s. So. Okay, so I think so late like, '90s, but, early 2000s. So just yeah. like '89 to '99 was like the best period ever for country music. Um, I th- <laughs> I think like '91 to 2001 was my favorite period for animation because. That's when you got so many really, really good. I mean, you, that's when you had the Beavis and Butthead going on, challenging things. You had um, there's the tail end of Ren and Stimpy when they were actually like really just going out there and saying, "Here it is, take it." Um, and then th- that's when I remember Eon Flux being on. That's when I Batman, remember the Samurai animated Jack. series. Do what? Batman the animated series, yes. one of the greatest shows oh, holy, ever yes. to grace um, the TV screens. Uh, oh, yeah. That you've got. Uh, 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 Johnny Bravo, I mean, it, it didn't sound like much, but Johnny Bravo was like a huge change in my mind on how cartoons were supposed to be because it was just yeah. blatantly in your face, stupid to the point where you and had to think about as it. Hell. Yeah, like you, you had to, you had, <laughs> th- th- it was, 
uh, like Ren and Stimpy was just stupid, just stupid all the way through. You didn't really have to think about it. They kind of just laid it out there. It was just quick. Johnny Bravo, like if you just watched it, it was just a cartoon. But if you really started looking into it and thinking about it, that shit was hilarious. Like there was there there he he there were the the jokes there would be layered like well Rugrats I mean Rugrats jokes were fucking layered like, like nobody's business um, when you, when, <laughs> when you have three call ins on a on on a penis joke in one Rugrats episode and nobody understands unless you <laughs> were specifically looking for it anyway um, yes. uh, wild thornberries uh, so uh, so anyway that's that's my take on uh, on animation. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nigel, oh god, the fucking Nigel made me laugh so hard in Thornberries. Oh my god, I agree. So, it was a great time. So speaking of, of of great animation, Amos, I know you haven't been keeping up with the Star Wars animated series. Uh, 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 have you? Let me let me watching? let me let me explain Star Wars animation real quick. Okay. Y- you know, there's a uh, there's a pressure on me from everybody that I talk to on a regular basis that's into Star Wars to watch uh, Clone Wars and Rebels, right? Right. Um, there's also this weight on me from everyone that I know, that is, especially my family, to watch the MCU. And yes. To, and to catch up on it. Um, I could give a shit less about the MCU overall because I'm not invested in it. But Rebels... And Clone Wars, like I have this internal drive to start watching it and to catch up on it, and it's something I've just recently noticed. Like, oh my god, like I need to watch this shit. I, the more I hear about it, the more clips I see, the more YouTube little shits that you know go down to YouTube rabbit hole and end up watching half an episode, in the middle of in the middle of a fucking season. Like, I have to watch this shit. I just when am I going to find time? But it's like this internal drive. I have to watch it, Ollie. Where are you at on the on the Clone Wars and uh, and and Rebels? I, I've fallen behind on the Rebels episodes, but I was following for um, uh, what season are they on now? Three. Uh, three. This is season three. I was like, I, I stopped somewhere in the middle of season two, not because I didn't like it, but because there's too much shit to watch on TV. <laughs> That's true. That <laughs> is too paralysis. much. It's hard. Rebels yeah. is one of the few that I that I'm actually caught up on, and uh, I tell you what, man, if you catch up, this latest episode is it's episode name is Twin Sons, and uh, man, you want to talk about a payoff? Like this was the most satisfying episode of Rebels ever. It's like things that they started building in the Clone Wars and continued with in Rebels came to a head, and we got some some payoff for a, a, a longstanding storyline and also got some tie in with like what we know of as star Wars, like the, the first, like our first knowledge of star Wars. So like episode four type tie in stuff. Mm. That well, just, the title the title yeah. kind of hit set stuff. Right. But so um, you, might, you might know where, where that episode takes place. <laughs> I'm remembering that I did see the, the last episode of season two because, um, there, there was like a sort of a sacrifice. Someone made a sacrifice. There's a huge battle. Yes. Big fight. Yeah. Right. So I did see it. Um, yeah, I won't say any more than that. But yeah. Um, but I, I think I, I had like a little bit of a tear in my eye. And um, I wasn't even that connected to that character because I didn't really watch Clone Wars. Mm. Uh, oh shoot! I'm saying too, I'm saying way too much. Okay, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop. <laughs> well, it but, could be um, so many different things because there's so many callbacks to Clone Wars and Rebels. So it, it could be, it could be anyone or anything. Yeah, I just kind of skipped past Clone Wars and that stuff. I just wanted to watch Rebels, so I just started with Rebels. Basically, I did watch a few episodes of um, Clone Wars, but I, I don't know. I, it was it like. Um, like Amos was saying, it's it's kind of uh, overwhelming to uh, try to, you know, the feeling of trying to catch up and all the episodes that you have to catch up on. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, sure, I'm sure there's a name to that, started, but I, I can never remember what it is. I started I Rebels. Is an okay place to start? Yeah, probably. I mean, you won't get some of the callbacks, like uh, mm-hmm. you know, like some of the clones that show up and uh, the character that you were referring to a little bit ago. Like, you won't have those 
connection. But how much that, of that, that is that, actually going to impact your enjoyment of the series? Because you go in after after episode four. Once you've seen episode four, of the movie, you know, A New Hope, like you go into every Star Wars experience after that, knowing that there's more than you will ever know about the universe. You know. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that it's that it's integral for every viewer, but to me, it's definitely enhancing. Hmm. To, already have those established relationships with those characters nice. it, it enhances it um speaking of things that are uh enhanced the expanse although you are you're you're an expander huh expanser yes what, i don't my are, god best you're, you're an earther best show on tv right now <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately um <laughs> yeah like I, like i said on court killers last week i'm not caught up on it under the current season but i can't wait for it to hit uh amazon's because i'm gonna binge watch it just like i did season one it's amazing um, if you could, if you if you had to sum it up in in like one or two sentences, how would you get Kent to watch this stuff? Wait, he doesn't watch it. Hold on, <laughs> Wait, uh, you you nailed it about five minutes ago. I There's can't... too much available content. Can't comprehend. It's on my list. <laughs> God damn it, it's on my list. So how would you I understand? Me, how would you convince me to put it at the top of my list, though? Uh, it's better than the Man in the High Castle. Oh. Wait, you haven't seen that either. I haven't seen that either. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the best sci-fi shows I've seen, and it's definitely the top of the batch of sci-fi shows that are on right now, like mm -hmm. like um, Dark Matter. I watch all this stuff. Um, Dark Matter and what's the other one that's on sci-fi? With um, uh, uh, Killjoys. Mm -hmm. Killjoys and Dark Matter, they're both pretty good for uh, what they are. And I, I try to keep up with all that stuff too, but um, the Expanse is my number one. Like whenever it comes out, I have to watch it. Mm. Basically, I, day of. Compare it to Firefly. It's it's not the same. Is it, is it even comparable? No. Uh, it's so, more real. It, it is, is it close okay, to Firefly it, it, or Star Trek? It's like a blend. Ooh. It's okay. like a blend, don't okay, you think? Can, here's here's my line for you. There are four different ways in the show that gravity can take effect on the characters. You have the Earth gravity, you have Mars gravity, you have belt gravity, and then you have open space. To okay. make sure that they that everyone knows exactly where they're at gravity-wise, the production crew prints the script in different colors according to the gravity. Wow. That's okay. the level of attention that they're paying to the show. Okay. Meanwhile, it's also got a great drama story where it's kind of like, it's almost like a Game of Thrones where your favorite character might die. Like, there might huh. be a, there might be yes. a hatch that, that blows out and your favorite character just gets sucked out. It's, it's space. It's unpredictable. Yeah, it's dangerous. And from what I've heard, it's 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 basically um, starting to separate from the actual book mm -hmm. in terms of story. I mean, this, this is all all hearsay from uh, from Tom Merritt, who's right. uh, read the series. <laughs> yeah, well, but, I mean, um, the, the first the first book kind of, or the first first series or se season kind of pulled from the first book mostly, but then kind of touched into the second and. It's the same as, as Game of Thrones, isn't it? It's got to rearrange like it. Anyone to can be die. Good on TV. Hmm? Anyone can die, basically, right? Yeah, yeah, and and it's great because they do it really classically. Yeah. Um. And if you're watching, if you haven't seen The Expanse and you're watching the first season, because you're going to watch the first season, because you, you there's there, you have to. It's it's like you have to. Um. My most surprising moment was when he, when, uh, when he, I'm just going to say he, when he was on the bridge, when he shouldn't have been on the bridge. Because what happens at that point blew me the <laughs> fuck away. It, it was great. Like, I, right. I knew at that I point. I can't wait to watch it. That was, my sell, yeah, that was my selling point. I have to watch it forever as long as it's on TV. That's definitely going to the top of my list because now I just want to talk to you guys about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do, right? That's how we play the game. <laughs> hey, um, this week I kind of geeked out on some Wirecast again, 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 again. 
And Again, I, yeah, I'm, 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 I mean, I, I know what, I, now that I've been to the BB Live studios, like I know what their setup is and God damn it, I want to do it here. Um, and I started getting into IFT, I-F-T-T-T, like just randomly. Yeah, just this and that. Yeah, it, well, actually it was a matter of, I saw a little plug where if I, uh, if, if, uh, if I have a stream going on, then I can have my red lights, the little live lights around the house turn on automatically and turn off when the stream ends. And uh, started looking cool. at that, so now I'm like ass deep into Ift, and I, I, I don't know how that fucking happened. I don't get it. I don't understand myself. But to help us understand things, it's time for this. <laughs> Michelle Sullivan, asking for help is a strength, not a weakness. Yeah. Uh, so I watched this one. Um, and let me, let me just preface this by saying I, I used to watch a lot of Ted talks mm -hmm. and I kind of fell off the, fell off the train. Don't know why, um, probably because there's just too many shows to watch, <laughs> but I know they're just like things I can keep on in the background, but I've resorted to, um, to documentaries and stuff mm. and, uh, uh, while, uh, working on other things. But um, I'm glad I watched this one. Uh, th the speaker was uh, super charming, um, almost, uh, I mean, very charismatic. Um, and uh, she's also um, like a, a very short lady. Um, I, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how to say this. Uh, I, I don't know what the condition is called, but she she was born with um, a condition that. Or she she doesn't grow past a certain thing. So like uh, people like, start noticing. So like a form of dwarfism. Some form of dwarfism. Okay. Um, she didn't really say what it was in her talk, but you know it was obvious. You could see see her. But uh, she was saying that, and this is the point that she kept hitting home, was you will never know what it's like to walk in each other's shoes. So, um, and I I kind of believe that. Uh, you can empathize, which I, you know, I encourage. <laughs> you could try to empathize with people and try to understand what they're going through, but you will never know what they've been through in their entire life that led up to this point, and they will never know the same about you. You know, they'll never know everything, all the experiences you've been through that led up to making you who you are. Um, and they won't know what it's like to live through that, which is an entirely different thing. So she's saying, um, since since that's the way it is, you're going to have to um, help people. You have to let people in by allowing them to help you and that it shouldn't be looked at as a weakness. Um, and uh, she went through a whole bunch of anecdotes, which are super funny. Uh, very interesting, and um, she's saying that it's it's also okay to ask for help because, you know, not asking for help kind of isolates yourself, and it's not it's not good for yourself um, in the world to um, be isolated. So, um, and it kind of hit home a little bit for me too because, um, you know, I also kind of struggle with this every day. You know, it, it there's there's this perception, I guess, that you know. Everyone wants to be independent, right? And uh, not really rely on anyone. But um, no. Uh, well, I mean, if, if you're uh, if you're like me and probably two thirds of our guests, you've you've suffered with some form and uh, some amount of depression for the majority of your life. So uh, there, there's been a few times uh, I can <clears throat> I can honestly say there's been a, a time or two that I've reached out to Kent personally um, and Squid in the chat. Uh, another good friend of mine that uh, been like, hey, you know, I don't want to talk about it right now, but I'm feeling down and I need some, uh, just need some, 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 some company or whatever. And it, it, it takes a lot to get there, even if you've done it before. Um, so I, I mean, I, and, and that's just, that's my, my personal battle. Um, but uh, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's not too, too much different for other people. Yeah. You know, I, I definitely agree with the message of this. It's definitely a, a sign of strength and not a weakness because I mean I think you hit on this a little bit Amos it's really hard 
to ask for help. It like when when I need help, like my my instinct is to just like go hide somewhere or just deal with it on my own. And it's always, you know, it's just it's got to be my way in my own time. Uh, but when I realize that, you know, I I I really need help with this, it takes so much <laughs> to like actually go up to somebody and say, "Hey, I'm having this problem." Yeah. Can you- yeah. It, it, it Cause, takes because like, no one else will know. Yeah. yeah, no one else will know unless you tell them. Right, right. And so, yeah, I mean, people that say that it's it's a weakness to do that, like, like fuck you. Have you ever asked for help? That's fucking hard. <laughs> like, it's hard, man. That's so it's definitely yeah. a sign of strength. Um, uh, Matthew O'Reilly, am I dying? The honest answer. Yeah. So this was a weird one, man. So this guy is an EMT, and. He went the the first several years of his career. He, whenever like he had to deal with like an accident victim or someone like a someone that's having a heart attack or something like that, and they ask him, "Am I dying?" He would lie to them and say like, "No, you're gonna make it," even though he knows like this person's gonna die like in the next five. Years. He would lie to them, thinking that that he was comforting them. Uh, when. Uh, so I, I guess you know several years into his career, he decided to do it differently. Um, there was a person that had been in an accident, and you know she was like bleeding out; she was going to die. And she asked him, "Am I going to die?" And he said, "Yes, I'm sorry. You're you're not going to make it." And the the expectation of that is that that you're going to have this terror, this like. Oh no, I can't die. You know, like you see in the movies, like people freak out and they know they're going to die. But he said almost 100% across the board when people realize, okay, I've got like minutes left, uh, they get this like this feeling of peace over them and acceptance. And there's a couple things that they want, uh, regardless of your religion or background or, or culture or whatever, they want forgiveness. Like they want to, they want to know that they didn't, you know, like ruin anyone's life or that they, they want to, uh, you know, forgive me. It's like I did all these wrong things, you know, whether it's sin, whether you call it a sin or just, oh, uh, regrets or whatever, you want forgiveness for that. And then you also want to know that you're going to be remembered and that you contributed somewhere. Your life had some sort of meaning. And he said that that's something he's noticed in all of the, the people that he said, you know, sorry, man, <laughs> you're not going to make it. Um, it's it, it was actually kind of a it's not as as scary of a thing. It's like a universal experience that when you get to that point. You know, it's really it, it's OK. It's going to be OK. It was um, just interesting. It was really that, 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 that is very interesting. Depressing. Seems super depressing, but it's like, oh, that's actually it makes sense. Yeah, it's actually sort of encouraging because I guess when the time comes, it's not going to be some big scary deal. Damn it, I just watched a movie about something like that. I don't remember. Oh, no, no. You know what it was? It was fucking Black Mirror. My God, I just... <laughs> I haven't quite finished season three of Black Mirror. Um, San Jacinto. Oh, I love that show, too. Yeah, San, San, I think it's San Jacinto. Um, if you haven't oh. watched Black Mirror, oh, my God. Like, what is wrong with your brain? <laughs> um, yeah, it, it goes kind of like, a... like that with the... a little twist at the end, yeah. The long, I think the longest ongoing thread that we have on this show, Amos, is Black Mirror. Uh, yeah, we, probably we reviewed it. Like, we started watching it like episode five or something like that. Like It was really early. <laughs> uh, and, All right, so tell me about Brian Greene's talk. Is our universe the only? So this guy, okay, so first of all, he's like this super physicist, smart guy, whatever dude that we'll never understand, right? Um, he goes through this narrative on why, why we live in a multiverse. And how we will tell if our universe collides with another universe, um, and and maybe it maybe it already has. Uh, pretty fucking fascinating. I mean, I'm I'm not going to pretend to understand it and be able to explain it. Um, but <laughs> if you if you if you would like to see some scientific basis on why we might live in a multiverse, which I mean, if you want to, if you really want to categorize multiverse versus like multi galaxy and the galaxy is just so far away and clustered together. Anyway, um, essentially he poses the, the question that we, or at the very end, I'm going to spoil it. 
he um he, he says uh uh as 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 the universe cuz everything's expanding right and as it goes farther away from us eventually we're just going to have a black sky because it's so far away that even the light from those other galaxies can't reach us like that's the way that it's going to work even our own galaxy is going to be so separated that we're not going to be able to see the light from the other stars that are near us you know 14 billion light years or whatever away from us um and the concept is, well, the end of the universe that we can currently see, how do we know that that just hasn't expanded past where we can see it? Like we're already losing time. The universe may not be 14 billion years old. It might be way older than that, but we can only see 14 billion years in the past because that's all that's close enough for us to see. That's deep, man. I, it, it, like, it melted my brain at like 2 o'clock in the morning like on Sunday or something, <laughs> man. It was nuts. 2 in the morning. Oh my God, it was great. But the, but the way he structures it, like you understand it. It's one of those things. You understand it as he's talking, but you can't explain it afterwards. I mean, maybe you can. Maybe you can. I, shit, I, I can't. Um, <laughs> so there's there's a there's there's all that. Um, yeah, go go watch that shit. That shit was good. Hey, um, Ollie, you go by Tondagasa online, and you have yes. a rather extensive collection of art, man. How long have you been drawing? Um, like I told Jackie Hearn before, it's uh, as far back as I can remember, but I did take a huge break at some point during my college years to, uh, pursue like things like architecture and things I didn't end up doing. <laughs> so, um, somehow I got drawn back into art, uh, inspired by other people who were putting out stuff such as Viking Glass, AKA April Ness who we all know and love and um, and you know think Tom Merritt doing his own thing putting his stuff out there I, I get inspiration from a lot of people and uh, doing a lot of different things not not necessarily art but um, you know and uh, people like Len Peralta and <laughs> Uh, Scott Johnson, different I'm artists, just part of as part of the community. Scott Johnson, yeah, every everyone, everyone who's part of the community, pretty much inspires me. I'm, I'm um, curious everyone about who's created. architecture. Uh, so you went to school for architecture, right, or took some classes at least? Mm -hmm. I wonder, did, has has that helped you at all in your like in your own art? Like maybe like I don't know, maybe teaching you new perspective or new techniques or or things like that. Uh, yeah, the, a lot of it was technical, technical stuff, um, doing, you know, three point perspectives, uh, just, just doing the, the, going through the technical stuff. Uh, I did take like things like technical drawing classes, um, and, you know, learn how to draw buildings. And then some of it was like freehand, freehand stuff, um, <laughs> architectural history that that i i hate to say this but that part kind of bored me yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, i just want to draw i just want to draw basically mm. and uh yeah they, they were just teaching me a lot of technical stuff which did come in handy and i did enjoy that part yeah so w where do you see this going so uh, like let's say like 130 years from now when you're on your deathbed uh, and you look back on your life and you think, man, I had such a amazing journey through the arts. Like what, what, what do you see as the like, accomplishments? Like what are your, what are your dreams and goals when it comes to art? One of the one things of the, I've always, was, was that? Oh, okay. uh, yeah. One of the things I, I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to do like ever since I was a child, um, I've always wanted to put out a comic mm. and uh, I'm going to try to do that this year. Awesome, dude. That is, so hopefully that is amazing. Cause that's, you know, looking at the style of your art and you, you've got various styles that you use, but I think what it, I like to experiment. To you, right. And what it appears to me at least is that your favorite style is like the comic book style. And I was, that's, that's what I was going to ask you is, you know, do you see yourself being a comic book artist? And that's, that's amazing, dude. I cannot wait to see what, what you put out. Uh, what I, what I love is that we're now at a, in a time and place where we can, if we wanted to put something out there, we can just, just do it. Yes. Just, yeah. 
And, are, and it's been that, like that for a few years now, but I mean, I, I, I'm like, there's nothing really stopping me from putting on a comic other than um, my procrastination. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. We, that's our, I so, think that's all of our worst enemy is, is putting things off. So do you have a, a, a specific topic you would like? Like if, if someone's watching right now and they just need to give you, hey, man, I'm, I want to write this story, um, you know, to give you a little kick in the ass to start doing the comic book thing, like what would, what would your ideal story be? Or would you just would write it yourself because be... you're just, you know, that, that awesome? <laughs> I, I would love to uh, write my own thing. Um, and uh, I, that's another thing I have to work on. Um, you know, I'm not a writer by trade, but I – I might be able to tell a good story or two, <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna try that. But if someone comes at me with a story, I would love for it to be something with a positive message, uh, something unique and probably um, funny, because I love comedy. <laughs> okay. um, yeah. Do you do you want? Would you prefer a story that's set like in? like the real world or are we talking like uh, sci-fi elements or superheroes or do you have any preference when it comes to like that sort of setting? I don't think I have a preference. Um, I, I've been watching uh, uh, magicians recently and uh, kind of catching up with that show. And that's something that takes place in the real world, like today. Right. And, and it's like, what would magic be like in the real world? Oh man, so we got a story Harry, for you. Adult, <laughs> yeah, and so it's basically adult Harry Potter in the real world. Um, yeah, there's a lot of crazy stuff that happens with magic in that world. So I mean, it could it could take place anywhere, and uh, I'm I would love to do something that's based on sci-fi, fantasy. Uh, I'm like into all of it. I've been reading sci-fi fantasy books for a long time now, and I'm okay with all of it. Right on. That's nice. actually a good answer. Yeah, we, 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 we might have the, the perfect story for you eventually. Um, so, uh, good, good point, good point. Since we're speaking of, uh, of animation, um, what, what are your, like, uh, you have a Patreon. Yes, uh, have... patreon.com slash Tondagasa. And what are your goals on there? Like, I, I know I could flip through them myself, but that's boring, man. I'd rather hear from you. What are your goals <laughs> on, on on your Patreon? Like, you are you looking uh, to eventually, like, like you know, buy the mansion uh, based on on the <laughs> art and stuff, or is it just like, you know, you just want to? I just want to live. Costs, or? I would love to live comfortably off of it, and just, I mean, if if I made enough money off Patreon, I would just. Uh, use that to support support myself making comics and or stuff like that. Just put stuff out there, and um, people can just easily get it. And you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't really have to worry about pulling in big profit. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. That's the but, dream, and I think I think every creator yeah. would love to you know just do that. Like like I just, my point. I, is, go ahead. I was just gonna say my my biggest thing is that I I hate having to wake up at a certain time every day and be at a particular place. I like my job, but I don't like that having to get up and go there. And I think you know, Patreon, uh, you know, and things like that. If 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 a creator can can just rely on that for their income, like man, that is that is the dream. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean. It, yeah, in the end, all I want is my work to be seen by people and enjoyed. I mean, that's that's really the end goal. But I mean, I have to live, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, absolutely, spoken like a true artist. <laughs> um, so I've done, I've done a little art myself uh, over the years, and you know, this podcast is a form of art, and there's lots of lots of different things that, that me and Ken have done either together or separately, or whatever else. Um, but one thing that you have to watch out for when you're an artist is copying someone else's work, someone else's style. Um, we've t we've borrowed some elements of other shows from Night Attack, from Jury, from you know little things like that. Uh, Daily Tech News Show, how we use a template of, of Tom Merritt's uh, uh, show notes. Um, but th something hit me this week that is just. It bothers me. Like, it bothers me very, very deeply. And I, as soon as I noticed it, I was like, I've got to mention this on the podcast. Um, 
so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up a picture right here. And uh, and I'll, I'll see. Uh, oh, that's a local file. You guys won't be able to see it. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to bring this up, and this is our album art. I know, big news, right? Like this is like everybody <laughs> listening and watching this sh this podcast has never never seen this before. But I want to bring in a very specific point. You see, we have our faces there. We're both making kind of crazy faces. And then we have the title of the podcast at the top with the names at the top. Kent, does this remind you of anybody else, especially having the logo overlaid? Um, I, I, I don't know. I'm so used to seeing our art. I'm, I'm not even sure what it's derivative of anymore. It's, it, it, it wasn't meant to be. However, it has turned out to be a derivative of this. The Not Attack album art. <laughs> mm. Yeah. <laughs> like, no shit. No shit. So if you're looking at both of them together. Ish. I mean, okay, I mean, you could pull up, like, you know, We Have Concerns or, like, almost any two-person podcast. That's kind of the standard thing. Like, have, have the two dudes next to each other, the name at the top. I mean, that's just kind of like a... I would think like a, a just a standard, uh, just visual. I don't. I don't know. I think it's what people would expect to see, uh, and maybe that's the problem. Maybe it's too. I I don't know. Too. I don't know. But as soon as I as soon as I notice the the similarities, like there, because Brian and Justin are making faces. You know, Brian's got this concerned look, and Justin's got like this angry yell. Then you look at ours, and you've got this confused look, and I've got this growl. You know, it's like it, it suddenly it was like, <laughs> this has to change. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my gosh! So yeah, yeah. I, uh, hmm. I noticed that this week, and I was I was rather upset with myself actually. Well, I'm, and and you know, I'm I'm really envious of people like you, especially Tonda, because I'm not a visual arts kind of person like i can appreciate art like i, I like what i like you know I, I i know when i see something that i like but trying to visualize something in my own head and put it down is incredibly difficult for me so amos does all of our our like visual uh visual art type stuff for the show and he'll present an idea to me and i'm like um yeah it's not quite there and he's like well what needs to change and i'm like i don't know i don't know <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't feel right. <laughs> yeah, like I have no input yeah. for that than like a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Yeah, um, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of how how we do things around here. Yeah, <laughs> from everything from the album art to the uh, to the website actually, which again needs to change. Yeah, like I'll I'll add content or I'll uh, you know I'll come up with bits or I'll get guests or something like that. Like we all have our our, our niches for for the show, but visual art, visual art is definitely. <laughs> hey um so last week we mentioned that uh we had a meeting with with mollywood at south by which was yep. awesome by the way uh cool so i'm gonna come up with a new little segment i don't have a jingle yet if someone wants to do that that'd be awesome but i don't have a little jingle yet but this is a, a new segment of the show it's called amos's balls 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 where's my echo i should do an echo Oh, I'm looking forward to this. I had no preview of this, <laughs> except, uh, hey, I'm going to do something toward the end of the show and just let me run with it. So as soon as Amos figures out how his soundboard works. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm just like, what the hell is going on right now? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we want to know, man. Oh, geez. Amos is... Wait, no, no, it's still not doing it. <laughs> Amos is <laughs> balls. I fucking love it. Oh my god, I love it so much. Um nice. so here here's here's the deal. Um we love getting great guests. We can't find all the great guests ourselves. Like we finally reached out to Tonda here, to Ollie, and, and we got him on. Um we're getting other people on. We've got a whole slew of people lined up. But if you think there's someone out there that we have zero chance of ever getting on our little podcast. Fucking tweet me. 
tweet me, and every week, every week, I will e- pick somebody from either our guest or someone that's tweeted me, and I will ask them live on the show to come on our podcast. doesn't matter who it is, anybody in the world, anyone in the world, with the exception of my ex-wife, anyone in the world, <laughs> I will live on the show request that they, uh, that, that they come on our podcast, and we can discuss that and make that a thing. So there is okay. uh, uh, this week's uh, version of uh, Amos is Balls. I, like that I, segment. I think I get the bit. So you're going to. Yeah. OK. I, I got you. I got you. Huh? This, this could be. Fun. We can go somewhere with this. Yeah. 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 Huh. Uh, I know I had a good idea. Hey, um, what were you guys doing right before the show? Uh, pooping. I w- uh, I could start. Um, I was listening to the new Gorillaz uh, oh, music. Oh, yeah. Uh, apparently, that just came out today, and um, I was checking out the videos, and oh, my God, there is one video. Okay, this this one kind of blew my mind. You know how you, you have a 360 uh, YouTube video where you could, like, use the little cursor hand, and you could pan around? Oh, yeah, and, yeah. Um, VR or you could use, kind of. Or you could use VR to look around? Yeah. That video, they have a video that does that. They have a video that does that, and it, it's amazing. I don't want to spoil it. Yeah, I don't want to spoil it, but um, I need more of that in my life. Um, <laughs> the animation, you know, the art style's always been awesome to me. It's like um, the the one who did Tank Girl, right? Um, I forgot forgot the artist's name, but um, the one who did Tank Girl did, and all that art is in there, and it's all animated beautifully, and um, you know, the same kind of gorillas art style in, in their past videos, but you could pan around, you could look wherever you want during the video. And sometimes there's something crazy that they want you to find. That is and awesome. Little, yeah. Little Easter eggs and stuff. I yeah. Cause I, I heard that, that gorillas had some new stuff out, but I did not hear this about the videos. Like, holy crap. Yeah. I, I saw a little something about the videos earlier, um, that they were like releasing them just in mass. Like, here you go. Here, here's, here's all the stuff. And I I saw it at work today actually uh, it came on like I don't know CNN or some shit some somehow it alerted my phone um, so I was meaning to, to check it out tonight but yeah that's awesome I have to say that um, I feel like uh, short format like like those music videos like probably five five six minutes at mm-hmm. at most it's probably a good uh, a good platform for that kind of you know three sixty video because. You're gonna feel like you missed something, right? Mm-hmm. You're gonna always feel like you missed something, and you know you could always. It's no big deal to go back and watch like a five, four or five minute video yeah. to uh, see what you missed, um, um, like a second or third time. So but if are, it's a long movie, it might be a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> are you a fan of uh, Weird Al? Yes. <laughs> so, so his last album when he released all those videos, all like. One after like one each day on it, on a different platform each day. Uh, eventually, of course, they all made it to YouTube. Man, that was th- these. I don't want to call it a stunt, but these little things that people are doing, the, the musicians are doing to to kind of get it out there. It's 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 amazing. It's really awesome, and especially with those, I thought those were just hilarious. Um, Kent, what's your stance on uh, on musicians releasing a bunch of crap all at once? I'm down with it, man. Because, like, when a when an artist comes out with an album, my favorite way to enjoy that is not like just listening to the singles; it's listening to the album, like as the artist intended, or at least that's that's how I feel most artists do anyway. Is they they ordered those songs that way for mm-hmm. a reason, and a lot of artists absolutely do it on purpose because one song leads into the next. Mm-hmm. But I. Yeah, so like, give me all the content at once and let me devour it. Like, I I love that. Nice. Um, uh, so I got too many windows open right here that I can't even uh, figure out what the fuck I'm doing in life. Like, I can't life. I'm I'm unable to life at this moment right now. Um, <laughs> hey, real quick, uh, where can people find more of you, Ollie? Uh, they can follow me on Twitter at t gossa t g o s s a. Um, and I could spew all my links and stuff to my shop and 
and Twitch. Yeah, but go ahead. you could find all you could find all the links at tondagasa.com. Nice. Uh, yep. Um, what is your favorite? Uh, do, do you draw everything digitally, or or do you actually? That, that is my preferred method. Yeah. At this point. Yeah. If, if you did, uh, if you weren't going digitally, what would be your preferred method? Oh, what was that? If you One weren't doing it digitally, what's your preferred method of, of drawing and, and creating art? Uh, pencil and ink. Um, just straight up pencil and ink. And also have uh, these, I, I don't know if you know about the Copic markers. Like mm. they, they can, um, they're kind of like acid-based, I think, uh, color pens. And sometimes people just do it with grayscale. But uh, it's like there's like var- varying darknesses to them. And you kind of layer it, almost almost like watercolor, but it's hard to <laughs> hard to explain. But I have those, and I, I would I would probably use those as well. So pen, just basic pencil, ink, and marker. Nice, nice. You can't. You look busy over there, man. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm wondering, do, do we have time to play hot takes? Play, play uh, hot? yeah. You've got 60 seconds. Get your mind right. It's time for Hot Takes on the Ritual Misery Podcast. <laughs> I hope we have time because it's only, it's only going to take a minute. Uh, so the way this works, Ollie, is I'm going to give you a topic and you are going to just spew out whatever is on your mind about it. It could be a rant. It could be just just whatever. Talk until you hear that sound. And then you stop talking. I give you your next topic. It should take about a minute. You ready? Ready. All right, Ollie. Lynn Peralta, am I right? Yes, uh, Lynn Peralta is a huge inspiration to me. He's an amazing artist. Um, please support his child for uh, going to win his award. Uh, I don't have the links or anything, but uh, support that guy because he's amazing and he inspires a whole bunch of people, including myself. The greatest American hero, am I right? Yes, oh my God. I love that guy. He's the most underrated superhero ever and even though he never learned how to fly properly i still love him and uh <laughs> i wish i had this shirt tom merritt am i right yes uh i love tom merritt and he he inspires all of us in this community uh if it weren't for him a lot of people uh, including myself and uh, Evis and kent we wouldn't be doing what we're doing today support that guy dr strange am i right dr strange oh uh, i love that movie um, I've only seen it once, but uh, I would love to watch it over and over again if I could. Uh, the Ritual Misery podcast, am I right? Uh, those two jokers. Well, <laughs> who are these guys? <laughs> Just kidding. Love that show. Awesome, man. That was fun. Thank you. <laughs> uh, one, one, one day my dream is going to come true that we're going to ask that question and they're going to be like, fuck that show. That Oh, that's that's what I'm on right now, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, like, totally cool, dude. Like, love it. Absolutely loved it. I love that segment. Um. So we have uh. We, we uh, and speaking of Doctor Strange. Um, anyway, um. That's that's a uh, that's. I don't even know. Yeah, what that we'll was. leave that one. Yeah, yeah, we'll leave that <laughs> one. Moving just, on. Just floating, just floating out there. Hey, um, so before we got on the show tonight, I was actually playing with my daughter, and we were playing feed the feed the feed the feed the kids, feed the pets, feed the babies. I don't know. Um, so she's got a bunch <laughs> of stuffed animals, and we were we were feeding them, and then putting them to bed, and then getting up in the morning, and then uh, oh. feeding them. Uh, it's like like a lot of feeding of stuffed animals, and we ran yep. out of milk. Yep. Yes. So I did. asked her where she was going to go to get milk. She said from the cow. I said, well, where's the cow? She said it's at the farmer. So she went out to the farmer to get the milk. Um, that brought in a little inspiration. So I, I asked her a few more questions about the farmer. And she she spun a, a, a tale that was just amazing. Uh, I, I didn't know my daughter could come up with such great stories off the cuff. And, and I'm really glad that she did because, man, it just makes me feel good as a, as a, as a creator, even, even just one that can barely make a podcast work. Uh, just, just, I, I, I love creating things and to see that passed on to her storytelling ability. It's, it's, it's great. It's great. So, um, Kent, I, I sent you the story that she told me as best I can remember it. Now, some of the things might've got jumbled up a little bit. Um, I had to improvise some of the details, but, uh, Kent, w- would you, would you do me the flavor of, uh, you go ahead and read it and try to read it in Autumn's four-year-old voice. 
um, in her mannerisms, and then I'll tell you how close you get to to how well she did. All right, I'll do my best. Uh, good thing I've got the email up that you sent me with the story. So yeah, yeah. All right. Oh gosh. All right. In in Autumn's four year old voice. All right. Let's see if I can do this. Ooh. All right. Farmers work very hard planting wheat and poop. They begin by plowing their album, and if they don't have a tractor, they use flares. Then they plant kaiju seeds, and by the next fall, they have many acres of galaxies. Tomatoes are harder to raise. They grow on magical bushes, and the farmer sprays them with ink to keep the bugs off. The easiest things to grow are green anecdotes, but the farmer must be very careful to make sure worms don't get into his theater. <laughs> Farmers <laughs> also raise onions, cabbages, lettuce, and gorillas. But no matter what they grow, Farmers really lead a strange life. That is spot on, man. Wow. Like, yes. Oh, good job, Autumn, for coming up with such a great story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I can see I can see a few of the spots where I improvised didn't quite jive with the story quite well. Um, but, I mean, <laughs> look, any farmer that's going to raise onions, cabbages, lettuce, and gorillas, come on. I mean. <laughs> Out of ki the kaiju seeds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, it kinda makes kaiju sense. seeds, that's. I mean, it does. I mean that's where, that's where the best art comes from, right? Oh, <laughs> but that's always that's pretty good. Hey, Kent, where can people find you at, man? Man, the best place to follow me is on Twitter at rm underscore del noche. Unless you're a beer guy, if you're a beer guy, you need to get on Untapped and look up del noche. That's me. Follow me there. Awesome. Uh, I'm at Ethan Kane. You can find me there. You can find me Ethan Kane or Ethan Kane seventy seven. One of those two combinations. Pretty much anywhere. Um, I want to tell you real quick, Kent, about the most awesome people in the fucking world. Um, yeah, I know who those people are. I, I don't think you do. I bet I do. You do? They're people that have been at patreon.com slash ritual misery and uh, click the little button. You, ha you do know these people. I do. I told you I did. So, so no, this, they're amazing, man. This is kind of how I see it. If you like the show and you give a fuck, you might as well just give us a buck. I agree. And if you don't give a shit, at least give us a shout. Cook us up with a little five-star rating and a shitty review. Or just tweet about the show. That's all we need. Let's yep. make this happen. Yep, yep, yep. Support us, man. Yeah. Uh, any way you can, any way you want. We appreciate all of it. We love all of you. And Jotmon, uh, Jotmon wants to know if a short will work. Um you know, as long as it's as long as it's a wide spray, you know, we need to, we need it to get out there to as many people as possible. So make sure that uh, let, let people know that yeah. this shart is a shart out to ritual misery. There we go. You, 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 you got to make sure you build up a little pressure and get the angle just right. <laughs> hey, um, oh. Next week we got. Uh, oh, well, wait, 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 wait. If you want to, if you want to tell people about us on 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 Twitter. At Ritual Misery. I don't know if we said that or not. Because we're, we're really, yep. really good at promoting ourselves. That's why. <laughs> at Ritual Misery on Twitter. Um, next week, we have the honor and privilege of having Captain Fubar mm -hmm. on the show. Mm -hmm. And the week after that is my birthday, bitches. You all better be here. Yep. It, that's the secret. Who's coming on that? On oh. Two weeks. <laughs> I, I told him surprise me. Now he's making it an official secret. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but speaking of awesome guests, this week our guest was Oli Santos, a.k.a. Tondagasa, and he has been awesome. Where, did, where, did, where, did, Tond where did Tonda Gasa come from? Where, what's the origin of that? It actually came from a game. Shoot. Uh, it's, uh, it's called... Uh, uh, um, uh, 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 I'm forgetting. I'm forgetting. So, I'm forgetting. so here's the thing. While you're thinking of that... It's, mother, uh, it's called Mother 3 in Japan. Mother three. Every time someone thinks of, oh, it it came off of a video game, blah blah. blah. I'm always afraid they're gonna say it came off Zelda or it came off, you know, Mario or some game something that I fucking know by heart. Yeah, yeah, something I should know. I'm like, hey, where'd your name come from? And they're like, 
jackass the shit it came from a link in time like your favorite game ever <laughs> you know like you son of a bitch or link oh to, it's, link it's to called the past. it's called it's called earthbound in the u.s but earthbound 2 never came out in the u.s which is mother 3 i, I don't know if you guys are familiar with earthbound uh, it's a I, it's an RPG. It's one of those that games was out that, on the Super Nintendo. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 th- I think I actually might have owned it at one time. I just never played it because I was so into fucking Final Fantasy. <laughs> like, I just I couldn't get off Final Fantasy. Yep. Um, and uh, what what else? What other business we got, Kent? So we got we got we got Tonda Gasa at Tonda Gasa. We got mm-hmm. Ritual Misery at Ritual Misery. We got uh, patreon.com slash tondagasa, patreon.com slash ritual misery. We got Captain Food Bar on next week. We've got, who do we have in the pipeline? We got we got Mike TV in the pipeline. We got Jaime Ruiz in the pipeline. Like, these are people, like, we're, 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 they're out there. We're just waiting to, to, for the schedules to match up. And we got so many people. I, I don't want to give them all away, but God, I mean, so just so many. I don't. I don't even want to. I don't want to reveal. I want to reveal them week to week. But but if 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 you have someone that you would like to see on our podcast, or someone you just don't think we have a chance of getting, keep it in mind. Send us a tweet. Um, oh, and if you have some ridiculous videos that you'd like to watch during the pre-show, we're not going to copy Night Attack on that bullshit and have a doc. No, hook that shit up on our Facebook page, <laughs> Facebook.com/slash Ritual Misery. I think that's what it is. The Ritual Misery podcast. I don't know. It's it's not too hard to find. Throw some random stupid videos in there and we will go through all that shit um, and we'll make that stuff happen so cruise on by there and do that and hey man we got some music to play this little music right here uh, as it fades in I'm going to tell you all about incomtech.com and how awesome the tunes are there so if you're ever making yep. a video wonderful McLeod it's just bitching it's just bitching you should go by there listen to some tunes put them in your projects I'm Amos that's Kent that's Ollie this has been your Rich Misery Podcast Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> Apparently, we got to restart the show because Jackie just showed up. Yeah, I just saw that. I was going to comment. Like, oh take my two. God. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so so play the other music again. Um, no. <laughs> I almost spit out my water. <laughs> How jacked up would that be? Ah, oh, my God. One more hour uh, coming around. <laughs>